As I looked back this week on all of the reviews I've posted so far this month, I noticed that I have a trend going on with horror titles. Corpse Party, Corpse Party Book of Shadows, Silent Hill Book of Memories, all of these games have horror themes to them. So I wanted my next review, and my first PS1 Classic video review, to also be a horror title. Since I was aiming for a PS1 Classic, this gave me a few choices, like Resident Evil 3 or Parasite Eve. What I ultimately decided is a game that's playable on both the PS Vita and PlayStation TV that many gamers still hold as the greatest horror title ever made. Without further delay, here is my official retro video review of Silent Hill. Before going forward, do note that if you're in North America, you will not be able to play Silent Hill on your PS Vita or PlayStation TV unless you first download the game to a PS3 and transfer it over with Content Manager. For survival horror fans, the story of the first Silent Hill needs no introduction. Harry Mason and his daughter Cheryl are driving towards the resort town of Silent Hill for a much needed vacation when a little girl appears in the middle of the road causing them to crash. When Harry awakens inside of his car, he realizes that Cheryl is nowhere to be found and ventures into the town of Silent Hill to search for her. What he finds when he does go into the town is that he is confronted by a lot of disturbing images and blood-covered hideous monsters that are after him. As he searches high and low through the town, he finds various people and realizes that there's a lot of strange things going on in the town and he may be a lot more involved with what's happening than he at first realizes. Silent Hill is a 3D survival horror game with combat and puzzle elements thrown into the mix. Unlike Resident Evil, which focuses more on combat, or at least did back then, Silent Hill put a lot more emphasis on exploration and puzzle solving. Progressing through the game has you transitioning from two main types of areas. The first area, which is the most common is roaming the streets of Silent Hill. This functions kind of like a sandbox environment where you're running around a huge world of where you're going through street to street to street trying to find items and trying to find your way to your next objective. It's not completely open world to the point where you'll get lost. There are a lot of roads that are blocked, so you'll have a fair idea of where you're supposed to go after you do a bit of exploration. The other is what I like to call dungeons, but they're really landmarks like Alcamilla Hospital or Midwich Elementary School. The main difference between the overworld and these dungeons per se are that when you're inside the dungeons you're doing a lot more puzzle solving and there's a lot more combat to be had. There are a lot of enemies out in the streets of Silent Hill, but there are a lot more enemies when you're inside an area. Whenever you're inside these areas, there are two different versions of the area that you'll have to go through, which is a very big staple of the Silent Hill series in general. There is a normal version of an area, and there is the other world version, which is more like a nightmare version that looks much more hideous and has a lot more danger to it. Not only is it more nightmarish, but the whole atmosphere is different in the other world. An atmosphere is one of the most important aspects of Silent Hill. It's important because the atmosphere is what makes the game so scary. Rather than Resident Evil's way of just pitting zombies and monsters at you at every corner, Silent Hill has a sort of atmosphere that hits you from the moment the game starts to the moment to the game ends, keeping you on edge the entire time. This is mostly done through the radio. When the radio starts to emit static noise, you know there's a monster nearby, or a group of monsters. However, due to how dark it is and how limited your, si your line of sight is, you have no idea where the monster is, and you have no idea how many there are or what type of monster you're dealing with. You could be dealing with a harmless wandering spirit on the other end of the room or the other side of the street. Or you could be dealing with a pack of dogs or nurses that are about to pounce or stab you that are mere inches away. This helps maintain the fear factor from the moment the game begins to the moment the game ends because as soon as you hear that static, you know there's something nearby. So you have to think, am I going to stop and look around and possibly get hit? Or am I just going to gun it and run to where I need to go? Now overall, 
Silent Hill isn't a very long game, just like the original Resident Evil games weren't very long. If you know exactly what you're doing, you can probably pass through the game in about three to four hours. If this is your first outing into the series, and the, this game in specifics, you should probably expect to use up at least several hours, unless you're using some sort of guide or walkthrough. There is also replay value if, wanna play, if you want to play through the game again, because there are a lot of different endings you can achieve based on the choices that you make during certain areas and certain boss fights. As far as the presentation is concerned, the visuals aren't bad, but they're not great either. They didn't look too bad on the PS1, but the transition from the PS1 to the PS Vita and PlayStation TV does show a little bit of blurring in the CG scenes. It's nothing super bad, but it's something that you're going to notice. The only other thing I'll say about the presentation is the fact that the camera gets very shaky and jumpy whenever you hit the L2 button on the PlayStation TV or the L button on the PS Vita to be able to go for the behind the shoulder perspective. Silent Hill is a game that began one of the most iconic and creepy horror franchises in gaming history. On the downside, the visuals did get a hit when it it transitioned over to the Vita, and the camera's a little shaky in certain sequences. Outside of this is a game that was made 15 years ago, and it can still scare the most confident of gamers. PS Vita reviews rate Silent Hill an 8 out of 10. If you would like to comment on this, you may do so below, or go to my site at VitaReviews.net. Also, if you would like more information on PlayStation TV compatibility, hit the link below or go to my site to view my compatibility list. And if you would like to donate to my cause, feel free to hit the link below or head to my site to give me a donation.